you um, a huge thank you to the speakers this evening. I've been just beyond incredible, even though most of them run over. But I'll forgive them because they're all beautiful people. And, uh, thank you for listening to what they've got to say. Right, we're coming to the last bit of the evening now. I know we're all hot and tired and bothered. But I just need to talk to you about our new strategy, which you all have a copy of. So we're just going to quickly um, take a minute just to have a quick look at it and it lays out what Our House East is planning to do over the next five years or so. The strategy is a result of 18 months of uh, development work uh, with myself and our board of trustees. I first of all must thank um, the Lesbian and Gay Foundation in Manchester, uh, in particularly their CEO Paul Martin, OBE. Um, for his support with our strategy. Without that, it would not look as it does now. Uh, LGF is a wonderful organization. You've already met Annie tonight, and I hope that she takes back our grateful thanks for their support over the last couple of years. And if we can just emulate half of what they've achieved in the Northwest, I know we'll be on the road of success. So just take a minute to look at each strategic goal, just very quickly. I'll sit through this as quickly as possible. Um, so strategic goal number one is supporting individuals. We will support LGBT people and those connected to it through family and other relationships to increase skills, knowledge, and self-confidence to improve uh, their health and well-being. It's truly important that Essex LGBT people feel valued and recognized uh, by being able to offer them a range of services which really cater to their individual needs. Uh, and it's vital for them to reach their journey in life to reach their full potential. We come across people all the time who have been struggling to find their feet and make a supportive network where they feel free of judgment and discrimination. The chance um, of individuals just to show who they are and speak to others and understand what it is they're going through is really important. People from black, minority and ethnic backgrounds more often than not come from families of the same heritage. So we, there is a real sense of pride in owning one's identity. Sadly, for many LGBT people, they don't have those real-life role models to learn from and succeed in life as a result of that interaction. So it's vital that people can reach out to a community where they feel that they belong and that they're valued. And that is something that you can't find in a bar or a nightclub. Strategic goal number two. Strengthening communities. We will work in partnership with others to build strong, cohesive, and influential, uh, influential LGBT sector. When I started work at Colchester Gay Switchboard, I arrived all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, um, deluded and naive, I think some people may call it. But I was astounded to learn of the fractured relationships within the sector, the kind of not-on-my-patch approach. I know from years of voluntary sector experience that you actually set yourself up for failure if you try to be so overprotective in your approach to service provision. The only way to avoid doubling up on similar work in similar areas is to communicate effectively. I would like to see an effective LGBT voluntary sector co collaboration, not only in Essex, but in the east of England. We are stronger together and have so much more of a voice, and we can learn so much more from each other. Strategic goal number three, promoting equality. We will promote awareness, visibility, and inclusion of LGBT people in order for them to achieve full potential in all areas of life. It's so easy in this day and age to be complacent about LGBT <coughs> equality, thinking we live in a wholly acceptable society where being gay or trans isn't an issue anymore. Sadly, this ideal is far from a reality in 2012. When people are, at, are able to speak openly on prime time television and compare same-sex marriage to bestiality or incest, we know we still have our work cut out. When a ministry-based counselling service offers reparative or conversion therapy for gay people to heal the gay away, we know we still have our work cut out. And that is endorsed by journalists as an acceptable practice. And I say journalists, I mean Anne Whittaker. <laughs> when a report is published in Essex, it shows that teachers have told their pupils to act less gay and that way they won't get bullied. We know we've still got our work cut out. 
And when health professionals tell me that gay men in North Essex choose, and that's the important word, choose to travel to Soho in London for their sexual health service, we know our work is still cut out. No one goes, oh, do you know what, I'll do a handy three hour round trip for my sexual health service. <laughs> it's not good. LGBT people are invisible in our Essex streets. There is no Soho, no Canal Street, where we can feel we're doing our bit by distributing a few condoms on World AIDS Day. There's so much more to take into consideration when working with LGBT people. And that's where acknowledging their existence when they access mainstream health services, housing, care services, and their place of work or education is vital in making sure they are getting an equal service. If we don't ask them, we will never know. And strategic goal number four, developing excellence. We will continuously develop our people's systems and procedures to deliver and sustain excellence for all our beneficiaries. We want to invest in our staff and volunteers so they can not only be the best at what they do, but they can also be trailblazers for other LGBT people, to ignite passion and drive for equality. To have a dynamic team is the only way to get our message across and ensure that positive challenges happen to help shape the future for LGBT people. We have people contacting us all the time, whether they are individuals or organisations, and the, the one thing that comes up again and again and again is the questions of, we don't know how to do this. Can you help us sort this out? We are more than happy to help develop excellence, not only with what we do, but with all providers in the whole of Essex. Measuring the impact of what we do can really only be the best way to evidence the need for it. <coughs> I could stand here and tell you a hundred stories of people we have worked with over the years and how we have had such a positive impact on their lives, and these stories are worth sharing. <coughs> Just to close, I was amazed at how little there was for LGBT people in Essex when I arrived. I'm a Suffolk boy, so I kind of came over the border uh, rather naively. Uh, it's a whole different world here. The LGBT voluntary sector makes up for 0.03% of all voluntary sector funding. 0.03%, that's pennies in the UK. With research from the likes of Sigma, Stonewall, and the Lesbian and Gay Foundation, we're finally getting some vital stats about what needs to be done for this underrepresented community. We do know there are other health needs aside from sexual health. There are many health and social inequalities for LGBT people in the UK. If we look closer at what that looks like in smaller towns and rural communities in Essex, I'm certain the discoveries would actually be devastating. I can say with some confidence that there are LGBT people in Essex right now who are being terrorised and victimised. I can confidently say there is new HIV diagnosis happening for gay men in Essex because they've been ignorant to information that's out there to help. I can say that young men and women in schools are not only dealing with homophobia in the classroom, which mostly goes unchallenged, but they're also dealing with it when they get home as well. I can confidently say that there is an 80-year-old woman who is terrified to come out to her carers who visit her home just in case they treat her differently as a result. I can stand here and say that lesbian, gay, and bisexual people in Essex feel like second-class citizens compared to their heterosexual counterparts because they feel undervalued and unheard. And I know that there are trans people in our local towns and communities who are feeling unable to even leave their house for fear of their lives. I know I don't want any of these things for the community that we are here to serve. It's time that we join together and make sure people can be themselves and not live in fear. And whose job is that? Well, the truth is, it's all of ours. I would like to invite you to join our house east in the journey to achieve absolute equality for all. Thank you very much.